Live, live. Uh, yeah, I'm live. Hey guys, uh, good afternoon. Uh, good morning to some of you guys if you're in the West Coast, but uh, good afternoon if you're in uh, Central Time Zone, Eastern Time Zone. Uh, how's it going? Welcome to Tech News that Jerome Ortega finds interesting. This is episode 43, I think. Um, we got we got chat going on already. Uh, Android stud, party people, party people. Now let's get funky now. <laughs> I don't, I, I can't say it probably the way Leo would say it, but Leo, uh, welcome to the stream. If you're here, if not, you are the first. So, um, well, sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, welcome, welcome. Um, Brian, Android stud, the bouncer in the house. Brian, what's going on? Uh, good morning, good afternoon, man. How's it going? How you doing? Welcome to the stream. Um, six. Good morning, good afternoon, um, whatever time zone you're in. I don't know what time it is in Puerto Rico. Um, that also really shows how bad my geography is. Uh, Will, yo, yo, Will, what's going on, man? How's it going? Uh, welcome to the stream. Okay, um, I, you know what? If, if you guys haven't noticed, I'm not in the studio. I'm at home, and I... Uh, kind of cleaned up a little bit. I put my cameras there to make it a little more like, you know, visual. I'm just, I'm just showing off my cameras. That's all I use. I use one camera and two lenses. That's how I do almost all my work when I do my photography stuff. But uh, yeah, man, um, I'm at home. I'm assuming most of you are at home for the people who still have to go out and like work and do all that kind of stuff props to you guys respect to you guys because um it doesn't look like uh, you know this coronavirus thing is letting up it doesn't look like at all actually i don't know if you guys saw i just read a thing that said um new york city has more cases of coronavirus than south korea i i think new york city just i think new york state in general just hit over 20,000 cases. Um, South Korea has like 9,000. Uh, France has 16 or 17,000. Like New York state alone has more cases than some countries, which is crazy. Six says it's 1 p.m. here. Okay. Well, now I know that you're in the Eastern time zone. Sorry, six, my bad. <laughs> I feel like an idiot. Um, I will be touching into some of this other coronavirus stuff a little later because that's really where the bulk of the news is right now. Not that it's the only thing to talk about, but obviously it's affecting all of us in some form or fashion. Just be safe out there, guys. Um, you know, and I, I've been preaching this before. Um, be good to each other because it's, uh, it's a really fucked up situation right now. So... Um, <laughs> with <laughs> Brian. Don't clip that six. You know he's going to clip it because <laughs> I look like an idiot that doesn't know where Puerto Rico is. <laughs> I it's it's. I was going to say it's early. I wanted to use that as an excuse, but uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. Um, this whole thing has me thrown for a loop. Uh, it's something I said before. I don't know how it's affecting you guys. Um, I know Will, right? Will, for example, is working. Um, he's still going out and he's still doing his thing. So um, respect to him, man, because it's just, I mean, my mom's still going out. Uh, she's she's trying to take more time off, which is great. Um, but it's it's tough, man. Uh, again, props to you guys for, for going out there and being in the front line because there are a lot of people who are still going to work every day who probably aren't making a ton of money. And if they get sick, you're not going to have the money to, um, a lot of people aren't going to have the money to take care of themselves or their families or whatever. So hopefully, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's tough. Bailey. Hey, Jerome. Hey, Bailey. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream. Uh, glad you made it. Uh, just quickly going over coronavirus stuff and being safe, being good to people. Cause, uh, I think it's important, especially now especially with all the cases and everything that's going on. Um, you know, it's crazy because here in Chicago, they put a shelter in place order, right? 
and I think this is all of Illinois too. Bailey should know Bailey's from Illinois. Um, where we're not supposed to leave, you know, unless you need to get the essentials or whatever until April 7th. April 7th seems really, really optimistic. I have a feeling this is going to get pushed past April 7th. I think in New York, they're on a 90 day lockdown, um, which is crazy to think about being locked down for 90 days. Like I'm looking at myself in the camera and I see like, I need a haircut. I need to get faded. And, um, I don't have a barber to go to, so I'm probably just going to shave my head probably <laughs> next week or something. Cause I can't, this is, this is annoying for me. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, okay. So let's, let's get started. Um, let me share my screen here. Uh, so the first article I have, I'm trying to be optimistic. So let me get my mood going up because right now it's just, you know, what sucks. It sucks. Let me, let me put this shit back on me. It sucks. Um, it sucks when you're just home all day. Cause, cause you do get a little stir crazy. Um, I haven't been able to go to the gym in almost a week and I'm used to going to the gym. It kind of helps me like get into my groove. It helps me feel better. And, um, Yesterday it snowed, so I wasn't, I couldn't even go out for a walk. Today I went out for a walk. Um, still battling with like snow and ice because, you know, it's still cold here and I just can't get into a groove. Today, though, I told myself, today, Jerome, you're getting into a fucking groove. You're going to do some work. You're going to um, live stream. And actually, guys, just FYI, I might start live streaming every day because I don't have shit else to do. And, uh, you know, if it's uh if it's a good way to entertain you guys too to share tech news for you guys to share tech news with me that's great um so what are you guys saying here um will says yeah i need a haircut yeah man it sucks uh bailey says oh for sure i'm doubtful my school is even going to open again at this point yeah i think for most people who who might even think that school is event i don't unless they find some kind of cure or whatever or vaccine. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. And just for FYI, for everybody who's been hoarding toilet paper, toilet paper is not the cure. So uh, lay off the toilet paper. Um, six says, Jerome, just shave. Your no, I, that's exactly what I plan on doing. Six is uh, I can't, I can't wait for that to, I just, I don't like being completely shaggy there. So yeah probably just going to shave my head. Bailey says, I got my haircut days before the lo lockdown. I was lucky. Yeah. I mean, lucky in that sense, but what are you going to do in three weeks or two weeks? Or I don't know how often you guys get haircuts. I usually get a haircut every two and a half weeks or so. Um, Brian says, who downloaded the house party app? What is this? A social, a social app to, <laughs> no, I don't, I haven't even heard of that. Um, Steven, Steven Andre, did I say that last name right? But Steven, hi from uh, Ham Hamburg, Germany. Uh, Steven, how's it going, man? Welcome to the stream. Um, thanks for thanks for making it. How's it going over there? Um, I know Europe is at this point a lot of a lot of parts of Europe is like the epicenter for you know uh, the virus. You know, obviously Italy, Spain though I think is also going crazy. Um, Bailey says I'm going to miss my fade when it leaves. <laughs> yeah, I know. Steven says doing a comparison S20 Ultra versus some other flagship. What's the other flagship? iPhone 11 Pro? Um, I wish I had an S20. I really wanted to test an S20 versus an iPhone 11 Pro and versus the Pixel 4. I mean, I'm more excited to test it with the iPhone 11 Pro just because I feel like that's the better camera. But unfortunately, I don't have one. Unfortunately, I don't have the money for it either. So yeah. Anyway, okay, let's... Uh, Let's go back into this. Uh, Steven says, doing good, crazy quarantine, but still doing fine. Thanks for asking. Hey, man, just as long as you're safe, I think we're all trying to figure this shit out and, um, you know, just trying to figure it out. That's that's the best way I can put it. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about this here. So this article from Gizmodo says, rumors claim Apple's air power is still alive and the iPhone 9 is in production. So I knew about the iPhone 9 being in production, but the Apple AirPower, this is something that Apple had claimed to have in the works a while ago. And pretty much Apple AirPower is 
like a wireless mat where you put all your shit on it to charge your iPhone, your AirPods, your Apple Watch. These are all things that I own now, and I would love to have something like this. Um, I find myself having to swap devices all the time to charge. Um, it's kind of annoying now to have three different things that I need to charge because these are so I, actually these three things are things that I carry with me every day. <laughs> carry with me every day. I can't get out of the fucking house. But when I do leave the house, these are the three things I carry with me. Uh, this morning when I went for a walk, my iPhone 11 Pro, my AirPods Pro and my Apple Watch. So uh, these are essentials for me when I leave the house. Um, and uh, for you guys who don't know, if you guys are new, like I don't read any of these news articles until I start this show. So uh, you're going to have to bear with me as as I read uh, this, like we got to read it together. So, um, so this says here, we all said RIP to the air power wireless charging mat when Apple officially killed a product last year. At the time, Apple said whatever prototypes it had been working on simply hadn't met the company's high standards which is crazy because they were touting this for a while. So, um, and Apple usually doesn't just pull things. So to see that was kind of disappointing. Uh, I guess at the time for me, it wasn't that disappointing because I only had an iPhone at the time and it wasn't my daily. So I don't really care as much, but uh, today I'd love to have one. Uh, that said, it would appear that Apple has revived the project from the dead. Leaker John Prosser took to Twitter over the weekend to cryptically claim why do people cryptically claim stuff? Just claim it. Uh, that Apple's trying to re-engineer the project from the ground up, focusing on wireless coils that would, quote, displace heat more effectively, and that prototypes were being made. In the thread, he noted that none of the current prototypes support the Apple Watch. Oh, wait. So it doesn't support? Which presents the biggest hurdle as the company refuses to release a wireless charging mat that can't work with its popular smartwatch. Hold on. So... Um, and that prototypes and he noted that none of the current okay, so the prototypes they're making now isn't going to support the Apple Watch. That's annoying. I I mean this picture clearly show. I just make the mat for all the Apple stuff, right? Uh, that would make the most sense. Um, hmm. Okay, so his tweet here says air power isn't dead. The project's back on internally. No guarantee. I wonder who's leaking this stuff. Cause at Apple, like you're they they're pretty tight lipped about stuff. So um he must have a good insider there. No guarantee that they'll finalize and release it, but they haven't given up yet and they're trying to re-engineer the coils to displace heat more effectively. Prototyping is underway. According to Mac rumors, Prosser has a decent record when it comes to Google leaks, but analyst Ming Chi Ku Kao did say a smaller list, a smaller wireless charging mat would be on deck as a major new hardware product for the first half of 2020. Prosser's tweets do seem to address some of the rumored issues that eventually led to Apple pulling the plug on the air power in the first place, namely poor heat management. Trying to cram 20 some odd coils into a sleek, tiny charging mat led to devices getting too hot and bugs with accurate battery level reporting. I mean, fair enough, right? Like, you're not going to put a product out. Um, you're not going to put a product out that's shitty. Although a lot of companies do that. Um, glad to see Apple kind of pull the plug if they knew it wasn't going to be, you know, up to their standards. Um, but the revived air power mat isn't the only Apple rumor coming from Prosser. Yeah, so uh, there's been a lot of like reports, rumors, whatever, that uh, the budget, budget, you know, $399 price, which is in Android's world, the mid-range price, uh, that Apple is releasing a $300, $399 iPhone. Um has begun mass production on the iPhone 9. While the naming is not yet official, there's been plenty of rumors that Apple is working on a successor to the popular iPhone SE. Basically, it's understood to be the same form factor as the iPhone 8. Okay, so we've gone over this, right? So, um, the, the budget or mid-range Apple phone, uh, iPhone would be pretty much the body of an iPhone 8 with the guts of an iPhone 11, with the... Um, a13, right? 
Am I getting that right? A13 Bionic chip, but we don't know yet what kind of camera it's going to have in there. But at 400 bucks to have that processor is great. I'm just more curious about what the camera is going to, what kind of main shooter it's going to have on the camera. Um, Prosser claims that Apple's currently working with China's BYD to speed up production, but there's been no official word from Apple. That's possibly because Apple was forced to cancel a planned March event due to concerns surrounding the novel coronavirus. That hasn't stopped Apple from releasing new products, however. Last week, it announced a new iPad Pro, MacBook Air, and the Powerbeats 4. As for a 5G iPhone 12, Prosser claims it's still happening, but it's likely to face significant delays, possibly until November. This is all weird for me because I'm sitting here talking about tech and, uh, you know, they're talking about putting out this budget iPhone and I just don't know how sales are going to be for it. Um, I just, it's so hard not to talk about coronavirus with all of this stuff happening because who's buying stuff right now? Who, who is not worried about losing their job or getting laid off or, I mean, you know, do what you got to do, right? Like we still got to make shit. Um, we still got to have an economy. It's just, it's not, it's not a priority for me at this point. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Let's, let's go into chat here. Um, uh, Steven says, I think Germany is relatively doing good. Italy and Spain are suffering really bad. They are. Um, those numbers are just going crazy uh will says everyone hit the like button yeah guys if if you haven't had a chance please um please hit the like button <laughs> here's me begging for likes uh feel free to like and share and subscribe and hit the bell notification and all that weird youtuber shit that i hate saying but uh it does help me um i think it helps people find my channel or my videos so please feel free to hit the like um share I just anything, any kind of support is uh, very appreciated. So thank you guys. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Will says super chat is wide open. Hashtag haircut fund. No one's going to cut my hair right now, man. I can't go to a barber. I can cut it myself, but uh, <laughs> thanks. Well, appreciate you saying that. Um, <laughs> Bailey says more like hashtag galaxy S20 ultra fund, dude, $1,400. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. I can't. <laughs> Will says everyone who got an S20 ultra, no focus. Haven't they fixed it? I think they fixed it. Right. I, I, I don't know. I, that's what I heard, but yeah. Okay. Um, let's move on. Uh, I think I did have another Apple related story. And so this is from Mac rumors. Um, Kuo. Uh, sensor shift image stabilization coming to 6.7 inch iPhone in 2020 periscope lens to follow in 2022. Wow. That's a long time from now. Um, huh. Apple's rumored to be planning a high end 6.7 inch iPhone model for release in 2020 and multiple reports have indicated that the device will feature multiple rear camera improvements, including larger sensors that capture more light for better image quality, which is, Yes, this is all phones every year trying to get better light, better night shots, bigger image sensors. They're all great things. Um, the latest word comes from noted analyst Ming-Chi Ku, who today said the 6.7-inch iPhone will also feature sensor shift image stabilization. This is something that I'm not familiar with. Um, says here, in a research note with TF International Securities obtained by Mac Rumors, Cole predicted that the technology will expand to three to two or three new iPhone models in 2021. Okay, so here's how sensor shift technology would work. While details are slim, it could bring image stabilization to the ultra wide lens. Oh, that would be cool. Uh, I'd love to see that on future iPhones, starting with the 6.7 inch model. iPhone 11 Pro models feature optical image stabilization for both photo and video but only when using the wide or telephoto lenses. Sensor shift technology would provide a solution for this as the stabilization would apply to the camera sensor itself and not be dependent on any specific lens. Sensor shifting image stabilization could also result in better shots with attachable lenses, attachable lens accessories like the Allo clip. Hmm. Um, Taiwanese industry publication Digitimes also claimed that sensor shift image stabilization technology is coming to the 
okay, so they're they're pretty much supporting that it's coming. Um, now, multiple sources backing this rumor. Hmm. I've I've I don't think I've seen how this works, but it would be great to have image stabilization on all the lenses, right? Not just um, the main shooter and the telephoto. I. I don't know if I've done a lot of video recording on the ultra wide, but I think one of the reasons that I didn't is simply because yeah, the, the stabilization wasn't there for it. So I'm not going to be walking around using it. Um, cool today also predicted that at least one 2022 iPhone model will feature a periscope lens. When they say at least one model, it's going to be their high end one, which could allow for five times optical zoom like Huawei's P30 pro or even a 10 times optical zoom as is rumored for the device's P40 Pro successor. iPhones currently max out at two times optical zoom and 10 times digital zoom. Here's the thing though, I've used the zoom on the iPhone, on my iPhone 11 Pro, and even the digital zoom is pretty good. Um, uh, again, I haven't had the S20 Ultra to test their 100 times space zoom and see if it's really worth it, but um, at least from what I'm seeing, it hasn't been the best. It's not like worlds above. So I don't, I don't know. Um, okay. So it says code claims the periscope lens will be designed by Apple in partnership with Taiwanese supplier, uh, genius electronic optical. So that's that. Um, let's see. Will says, LOL, it was all good two weeks ago, but now the return period is over and they're going to lose a lot when they listed on Swappa for bill money. Uh, some people are saying it's not fixed. That's unfortunate. Um, how, <laughs> man, so, do, you know, I'm, I'm just wondering for the S20 Ultra with that update, is it because, is it a hardware issue? Is that why they can't get it to like really get fixed? I don't know. Um, oh, <laughs> I speak of the devil. Brian says it's a hardware issue. They can't fix it. Sorry, Ultra owner. Dude, that sucks. You paid fourteen hundred dollars for a phone, um, and they can't fix the camera on that phone. Uh, Bailey, <laughs> the two dollars super chat. Bailey, thank you so much for the support, man. He says uh, Bailey says one seven hundredth of the way there. I should really have like a chart. Um, maybe I'll put it on Patreon chart of like these funds and where they're going. <laughs> Bailey, thank you so much for the support, man. Um, it means a lot to me. Again, uh, thank thank you to everybody who, who comes into chat just to come and chat. Uh, that support, whether you think so or not, hitting the like button is support. But for you guys um, sending these super chats, you guys are going the extra mile. Uh, for you guys who follow me on Patreon, um, that's also an extra mile kind of deal. So uh, thanks again. Also for you guys who are on Patreon, if you guys haven't noticed, I um, I posted a video this morning, a patron only video. And uh, I'm going to be doing those videos daily. Now that I have a lot of, sorry, my window's open. I just hear things happening outside. Um, yes, I have a, uh, I made a patron only video this morning uh, that I posted on my Patreon. So I, I don't know if that's entertaining or not, but I feel like I'll start sharing more life kind of things with you. I'm going to start sharing all these other things that I'm doing too with my news org. Um, I'm going to be home a lot. So there's just a lot going on. Um, Will, with the $1.99 super chat, two seven hundreds. We got your back, Gerald. Hold on. Wait a minute, guys. First of all, Will, thank you so much for the super chat. Um, again, uh, your support all, all your guys' support means a lot to me, but um, knowing that this is a hardware issue on the Galaxy S20 Ultra, I don't know if I should be spending money on this phone. To have a phone that's not going to autofocus properly, um, properly, I'm probably better off getting the S20 Plus, right? Maybe. It's been a while. I haven't really read up on you know what's, what's good or what's not. Um, Bailey says, I'm going to go check it. No, don't check it out now. I'm I'm live streaming, damn it. Check it out in a minute. It's a separate video. You can watch that later. <laughs> Come hang out here. Um, Will, thanks so much for the super chat, man. Again, uh, means a lot to me. Um, helps me do what I'm doing, so I appreciate it. Okay, uh, let's move on. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, I have this article from The Verge, 
and I really don't, I just, I read it and I read the title. I'm like, oh, that might be interesting to talk about. It says here, fashion influencers are rethinking their curated aesthetics because they can't leave their houses. Um, I'm just curious what it's about. Elizabeth Savetsky, an influencer who lives in New York, has kept her Instagram feed pristine up until now. Actually, that's that's really interesting because I posted before they put the, the lockdown here in Chicago, I took one last picture and I said, it's probably gonna be the last picture I take for however long. I, I really don't see that lasting because I just, like I miss taking pictures. I miss walking around the city and um, I just had to figure out how I'm gonna do that. Uh, I also have, you know, I don't know if, if you guys know or not, I, you know, I have a photography gig now on the side and um, I'm required to take pictures for this um, this company, <laughs> like a certain number of pictures per month. And I'm not really sure how I'm going to be going about doing that because sometimes they involve or they need people. I, I don't know. Anyway, so let's 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 talk about what this is. So in every past photo, she wears an inviolable inviolable outfit with perfectly done hair. Okay, so yeah, uh, and occasionally her smiling tall plastic surgeon husband. Where are we going with this article? They're photos. They are photos that make people wish they could live in her shoes. I don't want to live in her shoes. Uh, but things are changing now that she's stuck at home because of social distancing. She can't hire photographers. She isn't attending events. And she's dressing up for no one other than her family. <laughs> her posts are starting to reflect this new reality. For the first time, Savetsky recorded herself singing, surprising her followers who likely had no idea she had a good voice. Last week, she posted a selfie showing off her natural wavy hair and minimal makeup, though she did later delete it. Why? Her most recent posts are one of her on the count. Okay, so yeah, I mean, this is just the life of an influencer now. Or, you know, can't go out, can't take pictures. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I can't do that that I'm supposed to do for this company I work for now, or freelance work. But um, yeah, fashion influencers accounts might, which makes me think that the best job right now <laughs> are people who are live streaming like on Twitch, like video game influencers, right? Um, people are at home and yeah, I know people are probably working from home, but I'm sure there are a lot of people who are either watching someone live stream or they're watching YouTube videos. Um, it's a weird, it's a weird place we're in right now because I think a lot of it is people looking for content online. Um, if not, you know, if they're not looking for stuff on Netflix or um, Hulu, Disney plus, whatever. So, uh, fashion influencers accounts might never be the same after the pandemic ends. And it's already forcing them to adjust how they make content and what they post. Sure. They'll still receive, they're still receiving swag in the mail to produce unboxing and try on videos, but they're also grappling with the pandemic themselves and figuring out how their account should look. Do people still want to see cute outfits during a recession? This is actually, this is something that I've been thinking about. I, and I was just talking about it. These new phones that are coming out, it's weird because my my priority isn't there. I'm not thinking I need to buy the newest phone. I need to do the newest tech stuff. Um, it's weird. I, I feel like at this point, I want to do something where um, I show the human in me. Not that I haven't done that before, but I think it's important that we kind of rally together and like be a community and, you know, be like, Hey, this shit is real. We're in this situation. Like let's figure this shit out together. That's, that's me though. So, um, how do you take a studio quality photo when the only photographer available to you is your husband? What happens when you feel mentally? Okay. Yeah. So it's going to force us to be more creative. Okay. I, I don't think I can read this whole thing because it's just, this is not my wheelhouse and I can only see or read so much about how your outfit and <laughs> okay, let's, let's move on. Um, oh shit. <laughs> Brian with a $2 super chat, Turkey, three super chats in a row, almost three <laughs> Bailey kind of, you know, interjected there but uh brian uh with the two dollar super chat brian again thanks so much man thank you for the support again it means a lot to me guys um thanks for just making it hanging out um i want to do this thing daily because i think it's I, I i find it fun it's a good way to learn tech news and um 
you know, actually what I might start doing on Patreon too, is if there's stories that you guys want me to cover, um, you know, maybe start posting that in there and I can clip that and put it into today's story. So, or whenever I do TNT Joe Fi, um, <laughs> boom, you got a turkey. <laughs> so six says the company Jerome works for is <laughs> T67 Technologies. Uh, there are the cats out. No, guys. No, it's not. It's not. I don't work for T67 Technologies. I'm sorry. Um, let's see here. <laughs> the tagline is, guys, you gotta stop with this. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's let's move on. Let's move on. Um, oh, Bailey says, have you heard of Scroll? It's basically an ad blocker, but they partner with websites to give them a share of your monthly subscription. A lot of their partners are tech websites, so it's relevant. Uh, no. Maybe I'll, well, I'm a little confused on how this works. It's basically an ad blocker, but they partner with websites to give them a share of your monthly subscription. Huh. I don't, I don't know. Um, Will says, so wait, what's on your Patreon? That's the whole point, Will. Maybe you need to be a patron to see. No, actually, my Patreon has been very slow. I've been really bad about keeping that up to date. But uh, I, I posted a video today just about like the work I'm doing. I don't know, Will. You you talk to me in chat a lot, so I kind of tell you everything anyway. But uh, but yeah, I'm 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 about to use Patreon a lot more to kind of do videos there, patron only videos, so people can see what I'm doing, what I'm up to, and I'm gonna start like combining all my other stuff. So so people who know me. Um, as a tech guy, they're going to see my other videos now with like the new stuff where I'm involved, where I'm talking, you know, and I don't know, might be interesting, might not be. I don't, not everyone's into politics, but uh, I have like this little segment where I talk about what's important to me. So maybe it's important to you guys too. We'll see. Javier, uh, hey, yo, Javier, what's up, man? Welcome to the chat. Um, yeah, it looks like Javier is... Uh, dealing with shit too. He's still, he's still working. Um, how much is it monthly? Will, you could do a dollar a month and, um, <laughs> you can see everything in there. Mike's in there too. So I, I, I need to build that community more. So maybe you guys can be more active and I don't know, just try to work something out. Um, and mental health should be, definitely be taken more. Yeah. Javier, man, props to you for, for doing that everyday thing. So, um, insurance companies can EAD you guys don't know what EAD means, um, you should look it up. You should look it up. So, uh, okay, let's, let's move on. Um, okay. So this article from Gizmodo, uh, I don't remember. Oh, non-essential Amazon prime orders now facing shipping delays of up to a month. Uh, I used to be an Amazon prime, uh, member, but I just don't have the money for it. Now, have you guys noticed for you guys who are using Amazon prime, um, have you noticed delays on your stuff? Also, I know that everyone keeps talking about coronavirus being in cardboard or lasting on cardboard. Is that something that you guys have been cautious about? Do you guys take an extra step to like make sure the cardboard doesn't come in the house or you open it before? I don't know. I, I haven't ordered anything in a while right now at this point, if I need something, I'll, I'll go and get it, but I'm, you know, I'm pretty stocked up at this point. Um, and because I fast and I'm not eating every day, um, I don't really have a lot that I need. So, uh, as the world social distances to reduce the spread of COVID-19, many people are turning to Amazon prime to help deliver products to their homes. However, due to Amazon's recent announcement that it would start prioritizing delivery of essential items, many less critical Amazon prime orders are now seeing shipping delays of up to a month. That's to be expected. Um, the issue started cropping up over the weekend as many look to Amazon for things to help entertain or keep themselves occupied as shelter in place and self-quarantine mandates have been extended indefinitely. Now, Amazon Prime customers who are accustomed to getting their products delivered in two days or less are seeing delivery estimates on non-essential items as far out as April 21. Wow. Yeah. So that is about a month. In an official statement to Recode, an Amazon spokesperson confirmed that these shipping estimates aren't the result of a technical error and that, quote, to serve our customers in need while also helping to ensure the safety of our associates. 
We've changed our logistics, transportation, supply chain purchasing, and third-party seller processes to prioritize stocking and delivering items that are a higher priority for our customers, end quote. Uh, which has resulted in some of our delivery promises being longer than usual. While Amazon's recent change in shipping priority makes a lot of sense at, given the times, unfortunately, it's not always clear which items will be deemed essential or high demand products. It appears even things like an Amazon Basics coffee maker have been lumped in with things like graphic cards and deemed non-essential. I mean, it's a coffee maker. Um, I mean, I get it. That, that sucks that you got to wait until the end of... I don't know. I, I I don't know what to say. If like you need a coffee maker, um, do you wait that month or do you risk yourself like going to Target and picking it up? I don't know. That's that's a tough call. Um, I mean, it's it's also I guess at the same time you're kind of privileged if you, you're able to just go order it on Amazon and wait for it wait for it at your doorstep. So. <sighs> I don't know, man. Um, with some third-party sellers on Amazon having recently be, been told that they will not be able to send their goods to Amazon warehouses for fulfillment, this issue may only get worse as current supply. Like, none of this should be surprising. Like, we're in a pandemic. Shit's going down. Um, there are people who are dying. So if you can't get your, I don't know, I was going to say fidget spinner. Well, who the fuck is using a fidget spinner right now? If you can't get your fidget spinner, then you got to wait. Just goddamn wait. People are dying. God damn it. I, I don't know. Um, okay. So uh, let's see. Bailey says they block ads on their partner websites and in return, pay them a part of your monthly subscription of $2 and 49 cents based on how often you visit those sites. It's a really cool model and both parties win. I'll have to check it out. I've never, I've never heard of that. I'll check it out. Um, Saksham, uh, Tawari. Hey everyone. Sorry. I'm late. Saksham. Welcome to the stream, man. How's it going? Uh, thanks for making it. It's okay that you're late. I um, I streamed earlier today. I think the last couple streams have been at 2 p.m. I might keep this one at 12 noon because um, for you guys that don't know, I'm streaming later uh, this evening too at five. No, at 6 p.m. Central. But that's on my news org. Um, we're trying to work remotely now, so we're gonna see how that goes. And I'm I'm, I'm gonna be manning the boards or. I'll be using StreamYard to do it. So hopefully that goes well. I don't know yet. Um, Bailey says The Verge, Android Police, Business Insider, Gizmodo, Kotaku, and way more are all part. Man, I'll have to look. So thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Javier says I haven't pushed the button on some Amazon items, notably some Sony uh, NC. Sony NC? What's Sony NC? Because it's going to be a wait. Um, yeah, I I haven't even thought about ordering anything online lately. Uh, I think I have everything I need at the moment. So uh, I'm also, I, not that I'm being frugal. I don't have money for stuff, but I'm also just at this, like today, at this point in time, there's shit I don't need. Um, I'm making, I'm going to make a video on this about how like my life has been, I've been minimalizing a lot of stuff. So I don't know. Um, I'll be here noise canceling. Oh, God damn it. Yes. Okay. NC noise canceling. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> so <laughs> so slow. The WF thousand Mark three. Um, isn't that the one everyone talks about? I, I I don't know. Um, okay. All right. Uh, in gadget has this article about T-Mobile, uh, launching its fifteen dollar five G plan ahead of the Sprint merger. It hopes T-Mobile Connect will help customers impacted by coronavirus. Um, so a fifteen dollar five G plan. Is 5G the best plan to have right now? To help people stay connected during the coronavirus pandemic, T-Mobile is launching its new $15 per month 5G plan ahead of schedule. Originally, T-Mobile said it would launch the plan called T-Mobile Connect after its merger with Sprint finalized. Last we heard, that deal could close on April 1st, but now T-Mobile Connect will be available on Wednesday. T-Mobile Connect includes unlimited talk and text plus two gigs of high-speed smartphone data, including access to T-Mobile's 5G network, and at just $15, it's the uncarrier's lowest price plan. I mean, that's a pretty good deal for 15 bucks for unlimited talk and text. But uh, just to brag, because I'm going to brag right now, I'm on a family plan and we have unlimited we have unlimited talk and text. And I think we all have our own 10 gigs. It might even be unlimited because they change it to unlimited for a certain period of time. But we have way more data than we need. I think 10 gigs is the minimum. Um, maybe it's six or eight, but it's still a lot. 
But uh, yeah, T-Mobile, um, unlimited talk and text, I think 10 gigs with rollover. It has rollover if it is, if it's not unlimited. And after taxes, I pay 21 23 a month. I'm just bragging because that's super cheap. And I've had that deal for a while. Um, my buddy is a, he works as um, like a firefighter. And so he gets a discount for that. So yeah, um, I win. <laughs> just kidding. So, uh, okay. So um, let's see here. Uh, as we noted, when T-Mobile first teased the plan in November, you'll need one of those 5G phones T-Mobile offers to take advantage of the increased speed, and you'll burn through your data allowance faster than you would on an LTE connection. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, so th they have a $15 plan that'll give you two gigs of data, but you have to buy a 5G phone that's kind of like you're buying a 5G phone because you want better speeds for data, but you're only getting two gigs of data. Uh, this stuff doesn't really balance out. It's kind of pointless if you ask me. Um, I'm not knocking a $15 plan. That's a great plan, but um, two gigs of high-speed data and then what they throttle it after, maybe there's a better deal out there. I haven't, it's been a while since I've looked at any plan, so I don't know. Uh, T-Mobile's also also offering a new Metro plan for $15 a month for the first 60 days with unlimited, so about the same thing. Metro customers with a voice line can get a free eight inch tablet and Metro smart hotspot devices will be half off for the next 60 days. So yeah. Um, okay, so Will says, okay, two gigs of data. Yeah, not the not the best. I guess this is extra cheap. Um, Fifteen dollars a month is ten dollars, and what I pay is ten dollars less than what I pay. Yeah, so I don't know. It's still, I mean, it's a good deal for people who who are looking for a cheap plan under twenty bucks, right? <laughs> Will says the five G phone is only fourteen hundred dollars, and then when you use your data, you'll upgrade to the better plan and be stuck with them until you pay off your S twenty Ultra. That's the world we live in, man. It's only the world we live in. Uh, Bailey says one plus seven T Pro five G McLaren. Yeah, how much is that now? Is it is that on sale now? Um, I think that's still pretty up there in price. Okay, so uh, ZTE Axon Eleven is a sub four hundred dollar five G phone with a Snapdragon seven sixty five G sixty four megapixel quad cameras. Um, so it's. So the Axon 11 is 5G ZTE's first phone to be powered by the Snapdragon 765G chipset. Well, that looks pretty nice. Um, ZTE today announced its first mid-range 5G smartphone, the Axon 11 5G. It comes with a 765G chipset, quad rear cameras, and it's priced at $380 in China for the base 6 gig, 128 gig version. That's a see that that's the thing that I'm a little confused about is a lot of these phones when you're not buying them in the US a lot of these mid-range or whatever are a lot cheaper and they have much higher specs I think than what they're offering here in the states so it kind of confuses me um so the new Axon 11 5G sports a 6.47 inch curved FHD plus AMOLED display with a water drop notch at the top, housing a 20 megapixel selfie camera. Under the hood is a seven nanometer Qualcomm Snapdragon 765 chipset paired up with eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Hold on. Um, so how much is that one? On the back of the phone is a quad camera setup featuring a 64 megapixel primary sensor, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens, 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensor. The mid range 5G phone also packs a 4,000 milliamp hour battery with Qualcomm Quick Charge 4 Plus support and an optical in display fingerprint sensor. Unsurprisingly, the phone will ship with Android 10 out of the box with the ZTE's Mi Favor 10 running on top. Have you guys ever tried ZTE's? UI. I have no idea if it's any good or not. So the ZTE Axon 11 5G is now available for pre-order with prices at 380 for the 6 gig, 128 gig version. The 8 gig, 128 gig version is 420. Huh. 8 gig, 256 version is 480. There's still, those are still pretty cheap prices, I'm guessing. Um, 
I, I don't know the strength of the 765G chipset, but I really need to try. Um, I mean, it looks like a decent phone. I don't know. So let's see here. Um, Javier says, ah, the Accent series. Um, Brian says, give the people low end four gigs. Two gigs for 5G will go in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Javier, how I love the Axon 7 for the audio. I never had an Axon phone. The Axon 10 is Pro is dirt cheap in the U.S. for eight for an eight-month-old phone. Uh, Bailey says, I almost bought the Axon. Yeah, I, re I remember. Everyone was talking about the Axon 7 at one point. Um, it was an audiophile phone. That thing was absurdly good. That's interesting. Um, it's stock with some add-ons mainly. That's good to know for the UI. Um, Brian says, I have the Axon 7 also. I have never messed with that phone. I, I don't I don't know much about it. I kind of regret not going for it now. I could use it as an MP3 player alongside my Pixel. Did it have like a great DAC on it or something? Is that what made it such a great audiophile phone? Oh, why do I, I always don't read the next line? Great speakers and DAC. QHD OLED screen. Just wish I got Android 9. I gotcha. Cool. Um, yeah, for the price, that's that's not bad at all. It's not bad at all. Uh, okay, so let's move on. Um, for anybody who still goes to Best Buy, I feel like the only people who are going to Best Buy right now or who have been going to Best Buy are people who just need shit. Um, and, and I say that because I have a story that's going to kind of go along with this. But uh, Best Buy closes all retail stores, offers curbside pickup and delivery. Buying something from Best Buy is still possible, but restricted. Uh, so what you need to know, Best Buy has closed all of its retail stores. You can still place an order for curbside pickup or delivery. The company's also suspending installations for refrigerators, freezers, and more. Makes sense. Yesterday, Best Buy joined Apple and hundreds of other retailers in making the decision to close its retail stores to its customers. The company made the announcement on its website, saying that stores are now switching to a curbside pickup model for those who still want to stop by their local store to get a product. They'll also continue to provide delivery services from purchases made through the Best Buy website and mobile app. As reported by the Associated Press, Best Buy CEO Corey Berry said the company is trying to make the best decisions possible to protect its employees and customers while trying to meet the demand of customers who are seeking technology to help them adapt to working from home. And this is exactly, again, this is something that related to me a couple of days ago. So I needed to get I need to get some Ethernet cable and I actually needed to buy a switch uh, because I brought all my shit from home. I brought like um, I brought all my PC shit, my camera shit, I brought all of that back home and uh, I needed to be connected uh, wired. So I bought a switch. I bought some Ethernet cable. And I before I kind of continue with that, let me kind of segue into this. So I had all this stuff that I brought home, but I needed to hook up wired and I didn't want to order on Amazon because I just, I, I needed it kind of day of. So I went to here in Chicago, we have a place called micro center and micro center is like, um, it's not like a best buy. They don't really upcharge. It's Things are a lot more reasonable in price. Think of it as a more sophisticated Radio Shack. If you guys don't know what Radio Shack is, that means I'm too old. But um, <laughs> Micro Center is kind of an electronic store, but you can build your PC there. Like they have PC parts and everything. And when I went to Micro Center, I have it here. I'm going to share this picture. Um, and I took this with my ultra wide lens on my iPhone 11 Pro. So when I went to Micro Center in Chicago, there was a line. And you can see people are kind of distancing, distancing themselves. And uh, I, at the time here, I think there was a line about 20 people. And um, I was like, damn, there's a line to get in. <laughs> so when I went to the front, just to ask, because there was a guy out there with a tablet, um, I was like, hey, uh, so this line is to wait to get in? He's like, no, this line. <laughs> so what this line was, this line was to get put on a list to then get a text message to go into the store. So this line was pretty much a line to wait for another line. <laughs> and that's literally, I stood in line there for I think 35, 40 minutes. And um, when I got to the front, then the guy with the tablet was like, okay, so what's your name? 
uh, and your phone number. We will text you when you're ready or when it's ready for you to come inside. So, um, oh, that is not the right picture. Why is that? It's a picture of me and my cousin in, in California. Uh, I was trying to make that go smoothly so I could clip that into a video. Anyway, you know, whatever, we're live. So uh, I got this text after I... Um, after I uh, gave them, after I stood in line and it says, hi, Jerome, you're waitlisted to Micro Center as number 38 in line. So after waiting in line for 35, 40 minutes, um, then I was waiting for another 35 or 40 minutes. Uh, and as I was number 38 in line and uh, yeah, and, and I totally get it. I understood. I was, um, I was annoyed right? Like it was inconvenient, but I needed to get the stuff. And I totally understood why they were only allowing a certain number of people inside so that, you know, to kind of ease any kind of spread of infection if somebody is sick or whatever, right? These are not foolproof plans. People can still get sick. Stuff can still spread, but I at least admire and respect that people are trying to do what they can um, to minimize the kind of spread. Um, it's weird. It's weird right now because I think there are two sides of the coin here. Some people are really, really super paranoid about, you know, this pandemic. And then there's another side who, there's another side of people who are really lackadaisical about it. And they're just like, eh, people are overhyping it. And I don't know where I fall in between those two. Um, but what I do know, and this is what I've been telling people, what I do know is that one, it's highly contagious, right? We can't deny that fact. People are getting infected and two, people are dying from it. So those are the only two things that I need to know that, you know, in my head, it makes me think, okay, well, yeah, we should practice social distancing. I mean, if people are dying from it, regardless if it's just a certain subset of people, right? Like older people or whatever, like people are still dying from it. Um, and this is again, where I just go off and I'm like, it, we need to be good to each other. Uh, the, the thought that like you could be asymptomatic and not have any symptoms, but pass it on to other people. It's just, that's what scares me the most, right? Like I, I, my, my mom is older. Um, I, I have aunts and uncles who are, who are elderly at this point. And it's just the last thing I want is to infect them. So um, anyway, that was my story. It was a long line at micro center. I eventually got my stuff and obviously everything's fine because I'm sitting here and I'm streaming now and you're watching me. So that was, that's all I wanted to say. Um, all right, let's continue on with this in a note from the CEO. Uh, did I say this part already? Barry says that customers can still place an order for in-store pickup, but they'll have to wait in their car and an employee will deliver it to them. I mean, that's like VIP service, right? For those who do not place an order before st stopping by the store, employees will check the store inventory from them and process the transaction curbside. It just sounds like VIP stuff. Um, the company has also made the decision to suspend installations of large delivery products like refrigerators, ovens, dishwashers, and freezers starting on Monday. They will, however, offer doorstep delivery to get the item as close to someone's house as possible without creating risk for their employees. I mean, the nice thing about it is at least these companies are trying to do what they can for consumers who need to get stuff. So yeah, they might not come inside and install it, but they'll put it at your curbside if you can find somebody or if you want to do it yourself. I'm not saying that's the best solution, but it's something, right? It's something. Um, according to Barry, all Best Buy employees who are working right now are doing so voluntarily, and all those who do will receive a temporary pay increase. He also says that all employees who are not working right now are still being paid. These are all great things that you know, to hear that these big companies who make tons of money, um, they're doing things to help their employees. I, I, as somebody who is not for all of this, like big company, like making as much profit and like screwing the little guy over. Um, it's nice to see that, uh, at a time like this right now, people are kind of stepping up. So props to them. Okay. Um, Sorry, guys. I'm looking at chat. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So, 
Sorry. I'm like trying to read where, where, where I should go. Bailey says for the X on seven, I kind of regret not going for it now. I go, I, I read this earlier. Um, Brian says great speakers in deck. Yeah, that's right. Javier says, yeah. And front face front facing speakers. Um, Brian says he paid 287 bucks for it. Is it really that good? Jesus. It was loud as hell. Um, Bailey, Bailey says, Hey, now I love going to Best Buy. I hope Amazon never shuts them down. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where that's going to go. Um, Six says, every time Jerome says Apple, Will's wallet gets fatter. <laughs> I know. Will, Will, Will always has, I think Will posted something in our chat today, Six, and it was, uh, oh, it, I think... I think Will posted something about Apple giving N95 masks and Will was like, look at how great Apple is. It's like, bro, get off their nuts. <laughs> like, really get off. Um, Bailey says, tech deal. The $1,300 uh, model of the Surface Laptop 3 is on sale at Costco for $899. That's a hell of a deal. If only I wasn't broke. Um, man, I haven't kept up to see what specs that is. So is that $899 for like a i7? Um, again, I'm not sure what, what the specs are on, on the surface laptop three is, but thanks for sharing the deal. I mean, people might need something. What the fuck micro center? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Hey listeners, uh, this is my buddy, Robert, Robert, uh, what's going on, man? What side are you on? Um, I think you already heard my spiel on that. So, you know, um, uh, let's see. Uh, they're just giving people another opportunity to buy. Uh, it's definitely not overhyped in Italy. They're choosing who lives and who dies. You know, the thing that's crazy is I read this report um, in Italy about how they've run out of space for morgues. Like, it, ugh, there's just the death toll is so high there. And um, I'm, I'm guessing the death because, you know, it, the, the death toll reached more than the death toll in China. And I think a big part of that was because of um, the median age was higher. So there's a lot more elderly people in Italy. And I think it's a lot more densely packed in Italy. I, I don't know if, if those specifics are all true, but um, yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, Best Buy is curbside now. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's kind of like, hey, I got to buy something. Um, don't go in the store. We'll come to you. We'll put it in your trunk. We'll, you know, do everything. It's like VIP, bro. Uh, Brian says, even if it's 1%, 1% of several million people is a lot of death. It really is. It really is. Um, but it's two to 7%. That's staggering. Yeah, man. It's, it's just, it's just a weird time to be in. It really is. Okay. Um, so this article from Android Central says the new leak says the Huawei P40 Pro will offer 50 times zoom, 40 watt wireless charging. Both the P40 and P40 Pro are tipped to support 40 watt wired wired fast charging. How fast does 40 watts get you? I don't, I, I guess it'll, it'll tell me since I haven't read this article. Um, Huawei's highly anticipated P40 series flagship phones will finally make their global debut at an online only event this Thursday. Ahead of this event, leaker Ishan Agarwal has shed more light on the key features of the two Huawei P40 series phones. So it's a 6.5 inch display, a Leica UltraVision quad cam, 50, 40, 12 uh, time of flight sensor, uh, Huawei XD fusion engine for pictures, 32 megapixels, blah, blah, blah. So, okay. 50, 50 times zoom. Um, I'm just seeing if there's anything really interesting on it. I don't know. It's weird. Cause I, I, I lately I'm just, I read these specs and I'm like, eh, I don't, I don't know. Um, so 4,200 milliamp hour battery, a Kirin 995G processor. I know nothing about Kirin processors and 40 Watts wired as well as wireless supercharged support. Guys, do you, do you guys know how, how quickly 40 Watt uh, charging is? I don't even know what the iPhone 11 Pro is. I know it's nowhere close to 40 Watts. Um, I'm waiting. So there's a 40 Watt and a 27 Watt wireless charging support. Why do I feel like this wireless charging support is faster than the wired on my iPhone 11 Pro? Huh. I haven't used a Huawei phone in forever, so I have no idea. I mean, it looks good, but I think these are also really pricey. Did they not talk about prices on this phone? No, they didn't. Uh, anyway, I'm I'm guessing it's pretty expensive. Um, 
Did it to Will says, but does it have Google services? Yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, I'm guessing it does not. I'm not sure. Um, Alareza, did I say that right? Alareza, hey, welcome to the stream. Um, Alareza says, always there's a way to install Google services. I, I know people will do that, right? They'll, they'll, um, um, what, why am I forgetting the word? They side, why, why, why the hell am I forgetting? <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, I, there, there's always a way to do it. I just don't know how well it works after you put it in. Um, oh, God, that feels like a weird clippable thing that I just said. I, I'm hoping six isn't here. Uh, anyway, so, so uh, yeah, I, I think there's always a way to um, sideload it. Fuck, that's the word. Why am I forgetting? Um, there's a way to say, <laughs> Will, Will, stop, stop. Yeah, there's always a way to sideload it, but uh, I don't know how well it's going to work after it gets sideloaded. Um, but I've never done it, so I have no idea. Maybe, maybe it's maybe it's flawless on how it works. I'm not sure. Uh, Bailey says, "Got to know, Jerome, why iPhone?" I started watching you when the OnePlus Three was announced, and it seemed like the entire tech community couldn't stop mentioning it. What made you switch? Um, simple answer here. Um, so. You, you got to remember before OnePlus, because I love the OnePlus phones. Uh, I still do to a certain extent. But um, one of the reasons, right, is the camera. Uh, I wasn't, I don't think, back during my OnePlus days and during my Nexus days, I don't think I was the biggest camera guy. I think it was until I got the next the Nexus 6P. That's when, um, that's when the camera started to become a bigger thing for me. And I think that started... That, that that's around the time I started making more camera comparison videos. Um, but you know, the, the latest phones that I really enjoyed was like, I liked the one plus phones that I had when I installed G cam on it. I thought the results were pretty good. I just was not happy with the night shots. And then, um, then the pixels were my favorites. They were for a while. Pixel three was my favorite still too. Um, but then the pixel four came out and then, against the iPhone 11 pro, the battery battery was huge for me. It was weird because it was never that big a deal. But, um, when you compare the iPhone 11 pros battery to the pixel fours, it made it hard for me to, um, to stick with a phone that I could barely last a day with it. Uh, and will knows this, I've mentioned it many times too, but the, the face recognition on the pixel four, uh, it, it never really worked well. Um, not compared to Face ID on the iPhone 11 Pro. Uh, I really would have rather had a fingerprint reader on the Pixel 4 because I felt like that did a great job. But um, yeah, I couldn't even use banking stuff, right? I have Chase, I have Capital One, um, and I had to put my password in every time to use the app on my Pixel 4. And it was so annoying because there was no fingerprint reader to use for security measures because they got rid of it. And they weren't supporting it for facial recognition. So, um, again, that was another plus for the iPhone 11 Pro. And then the camera. I mean, I don't really have to say much for that. You got, I'm pretty sure. Well, I don't know. Maybe you've seen my videos. Maybe you didn't. Um, this is the first time the iPhone's been my daily driver in years. Android has always been my daily driver for a long time. The iPhone has always been a secondary. Uh, this is the first time I'm using it um, consistently. Uh, to be honest uh, and transparent, I think it's been a couple of weeks since I've used my Pixel 4. I really should start it up though. Just be like, hey, like it's it's still a solidly built phone. I think I just had an issue with it being $800 and not performing at an $800 price point. Not that the iPhone 11 Pro deserves to be at a thousand bucks because I still think that's a lot of money. But um it's been really solid for me. I don't I don't have a lot of complaints with the iPhone 11 Pro. I think the only thing that I had an issue with was um, sometimes I would get lens flare issues when taking pictures on the iPhone 11 Pro. Um, portrait mode isn't as good on the iPhone 11 Pro as it is on the Pixel 4, at least in my testing. But other than that, um, well, and then the UI, right? The UI in the iPhone isn't my favorite, but um, I'm used to it. I don't know. I, I, I always have my fingers crossed for the pixel five. Um, 
I somehow have my fingers crossed for the Pixel 4a. Maybe that's like a great midway point, right? You're not spending a ton of money and you'll get a great phone. But um, actually, the real good test here is to see how good this budget iPhone is going to be. I keep saying budget. Uh, this $400, I'm wondering how good this $400 iPhone is going to be compared to the $400 Pixel 4a. That would be the real test, I think, to see which phone is better there. Because um, I, I just don't, I can't see myself buying $1,000 phones anymore. I say that, but I think I will continue buying every Pixel and every iPhone that comes out, uh, the flagship ones, because those are my two favorites for a long time. But yeah, that's, I think that's the best way I could put it. That's actually a lot longer of a response than I thought I was going to do. Um, so let's see. Uh, God damn it, six. Sorry, Jerome, too late. God damn it. Uh, Brian says, reliability, Android is too fragmented. iPhone just works in a lot of ways. It's That's very true. Uh, but I love how Android is so flexible, but it can't get iMessage. Yeah, I mean, I again, I, I don't even use iMessage now. It's just all Telegram. So um, yeah, six says, Telegram, Brian, Telegram. Um I, I'm not even, I don't even want to post Will stuff about the pixel because Will, Will just goes off. See, look at this. I don't even, it's, there's this whole, this, I, I'm pretty sure I already explained all of this. Um, Will says, just give up. Google doesn't care. <laughs> I can't, Will can't help himself. He can't. Um, Bailey says, have you heard the news about the pixel five? I don't think I have. I don't, I don't really. Oh, yeah, the 700 series chip. Yeah, so that's it's really weird because so if the Pixel 5 is going to go with the 700 series chip, is it not eating away at whatever comes out for the Pixel 4a cuz that's also coming out with a 700 series chip? Or are we just going to have like these mid-range in between mid-range to high end flagships now? I just I feel like Google is missing something. I feel like Google just doesn't know how to make a proper premium smartphone um, or at least make a premium smartphone that can compete with the iPhone. I don't, I don't know. Um, here's another thing that's weird is uh, why does the iPhone always get the haptic feedback proper? Haptic feedback is something I never use on a phone unless it's an iPhone because it works so well. Um, I haven't really been happy. I don't get me wrong. I think the Pixel 4's haptic feedback is better. It's better than its previous predecessors, better than a lot of Android, other Android phones. But it's such a, I'm not going to say it's a simple thing because I don't, I'm not an engineer. I don't know. But how is Apple always getting it right? And Google is not. That's just, it's weird for me. Um, yeah, Bailey says so weird. Literally, why? Yeah, I I can't I can't understand that. Um, Will says the Apple Watch too. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's the Apple Watch. I'm really impressed with it, and I have the Series Three Apple Watch. I have an older Apple Watch, and it works really well. I don't I don't know. Uh, Brian says it's funny. Pixel should just play it safe. Big battery, decently bright screen. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what Google needs to do. I don't I don't know. Um, let's see. <laughs> Bailey says even as a Pixel owner, I agree with Will. <laughs> uh, Brian says I'm typing this on a three XL, and I love how Will bashes Pixels because if they listen to him, they will get it better. <laughs> I don't I don't know. At this point, I just think Apple is paying Will to bitch at Google and praise Apple. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. <laughs> Will says, I like the 4XL, but I was like, why keep it when my Pro Max is everything and has all the Google apps? I mean, I can't argue with that, right? That's, that's yeah. Okay, so uh, moving on. Um, hold on here. Let's see. Bailey says, I will say the Pixel 3 has some of the best haptics on Android phone I've used. Still no iPhone, though. I agree. Um, Ryan says, what was the best Nexus Pixel overall? So for me, my favorite was the Nexus 6P, but I think that's more of a nostalgic thing. I still think the camera, even years later, is still great. Um, yeah, so looks like Will feels the same way, the only 6P. Um, okay, so uh, I have this article from The Verge. Uh, Amazon Prime Video now supports up to six profiles on the same account. So kind of like a family account, right? Um, you know, Netflix, you can have multiple profiles, YouTube TV. Uh, and so those are always great because 
then you can split the bill with friends and pay a lot less. Uh, Amazon Prime Video, I guess, is doing it now. I've never really used Amazon Prime Video. I think the only reason I have this article up here, sorry, my watch is going off. Um, the only reason I have this article up here is because I just wanted to bitch about HBO. Uh, that was one of the things that I could not stand. Like I used to have HBO, was it Go or Now? I can't remember which is the one that was for online. Um, and I think up to three accounts could use it. So I split it with three people, but you couldn't have multiple profiles. So you were just always stuck watching what somebody else was still watching or yeah, but it looks like Amazon Prime Video is doing it now. They're they're rolling out user profiles for Prime Video, allowing as many as six different people to track their viewing progress, manage watch lists, and get personalized recommendations, which is pretty cool. Um, profiles are currently supported across a range of devices, including mobiles, tablets, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Amazon is a little late to the game introducing this feature, which has been available on competing services like Netflix for years. However, its six profile limit is one higher than Netflix, which only supports five separate accounts. So pretty cool, I guess, for people who, who watch Amazon Prime Video. I honestly don't think I've ever watched anything on Amazon Prime Video. But again, at this point, I don't watch a lot of media. Like I watch a lot of YouTube. It's really all I watch. I watch a lot of fucking YouTube. So um oh god i don't think i have the energy to go through this there's just this is a anything from a nantech is very in-depth which is great it just i don't think i have the energy to do this right now uh so this is a samsung galaxy s20 plus and ultra snapdragon and exynos battery life preview uh maybe we'll just see what the results are because i honestly okay so device on a black screen power consumption in airplane mode Here's the S20. So the S20 Ultra, oh, with the Snapdragon is way better than what the Exynos is. Okay, so good to know. Uh, web browsing, so the Asus ROG Phone 2 is up there. The Apple iPhone 11 Pro Max is up there. And then the S20 Ultra comes in third. This is the 865. Where's the S20 Ultra? Okay, so the 990, that's way less. So. I mean, at least from what I'm seeing, the the Exynos just doesn't have the same battery life as the Snapdragon, at least from these things here. So I guess these are just different tests, right? So again, here's the 865. Oh, wait. Hold on. Oh, that's 60 hertz and then 120 hertz. So where's the Exynos? Here's an Exynos really far low. Um... Am I missing it? Ultra. Yeah. Holy shit. It's so far down. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Um, we'll be dwelling into more detail into a post-mortem of Samsung's custom M5 cores. What are preliminary battery life figures today showcases two important takeaways for the S20 series. Samsung's 120 hertz mode is quite a power hungry mode. We all know that. The not as optimized as one would hope it to be. Um, while the performance and fluidity it brings is outstanding, expect on average a 20 to 25% power hit on your battery life, depending on use cases. Secondly, the Exynos 990 variants of the S20s aren't looking very well against the Snapdragon 865 variants. So yeah, that's what I wanted to share. So um, let's see here. <laughs> you guys are kind of going off on the chat. I can't. Um, <laughs> Bailey says, wait, whoa, how many of us pixel owners are in the chat? I think there's a lot. Um, Brian says, I'm one. Will says, I was. Will's an Apple fanboy now, though. <laughs> Uh, da -da -da. I was a Moto owner before Pixel. Fuck Moto. Yeah, man, I was a Moto owner too. Um, I was a Moto owner for a while. The the Moto X Pure was such a great phone for me. I, I don't know what happened with Motorola, what they did. Um, Alareza says Snapdragon is always better than Exynos. Even camera, really? Even cam camera performance? Huh. That's interesting. I wonder why is it when you say camera performance, are you saying quality of pictures? Or are you saying just the way it takes shots or how quickly it takes shots? Huh. Um, 
Interesting. Okay. Uh, last article. This isn't really, oh, I don't even know if I want to go through this. Uh, so this is from techdirt.com. AT&T CEO nabbed record $32 million in compensation in 2019, despite rampant bumbling, comma, layoffs. So and this article is just about a CEO being greedy, um, taking shit, taking money, but this is nothing new, right? These are how big companies work. Um, Despite spending more than $150 billion in mergers in a bid to dominate the streaming video space, the company instead lost 4 million TV subscribers on the year. Uh, so let's see here. Trimming overall network investment and laying off nearly 37,000 jobs uh, just since the Trump tax cuts were announced. Now your first question is probably, but... How is AT&T CEO Randall Stevenson doing in the wake of all this? Well, you'll be happy to hear he's just fine. Stevenson received a record $32 million in compensation in 2019, despite a wave of bungled merger mania so intense it even pissed, the company's, pissed off the company's investors, trigger, triggering a revolt. But yes, good job, Randall. Um, yeah, so $32 million, I mean, even if he did well, right? he's still going to get paid the same, just like a lot of other CEOs. Um, people at the bottom get shit and that's it. That's, there's really not much to, I'm not going to go into this because th this, this shit just pisses me off. So, um, okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just looking at the chat guys. Uh, that might be it. It's, it's, uh, what time is it? One eighteen. Um, yeah. Uh, so for you guys that, um, came by, what was he saying here? Will says, LMAO Jerome, he has kids to feed. That 32 million may not have been enough. They have to, they have to eat. Latrell's free well. Um, <laughs> all right, guys. I, I am gonna end it here. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining the chat. I might do this again tomorrow. And if I do, it'll also be at noon. I might try to do this daily. There are no promises yet. Um there's a lot of shit I want to do. There's a lot of shit I keep saying I'm going to do, but I'm going to have a lot of time now that I have no um, transportation to like go back and forth. And now that I have everything set up here, um, I might try to cut some of these clips though, so that uh, it's not just a whole load of streams on my video list lately, because I really need to kind of switch it up. Um, but uh, again, for everybody who came, for people who left already, um, I do appreciate you guys coming into the stream to to chat, to support. Uh, for everybody who um, who donated in the super chat, uh, thank you guys so much. It means a lot to me. Uh, if you guys haven't already, please uh, feel free to like the video, uh, share, subscribe, hit that bell, all the stupid YouTube shit that I hate saying, but I'm saying it now because I think it does help me. Um, if you guys haven't had a chance to do so, please do so. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, uh, if you guys don't know, I have an Instagram. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Instagram at phone Jerome. Um, I have a lot of stuff here. See pictures of stuff that I take. Um, <laughs> uh, and, uh, um, Twitter also at phone Jerome. And I actually changed my YouTube channel name. So now if you go to YouTube, it's just youtube.com forward slash phone Jerome. I think I'm going to try to keep everything at phone Jerome, even though I'm not as big of a phone Jerome as I used to be as old phone Jerome, but, uh, <laughs> no, I still, I still love phones. It's just, you know, trying to mix it up a little bit. So, uh, and if you haven't, I do have a Patreon, so you can go to patreon.com forward slash, well, that one's different. So patreon.com forward slash Jerome Ortega. Uh, you guys can check out, um, behind the scenes stuff there. Uh, I'm going to start doing daily videos there, just like talking about what I'm up to and um, kind of mixing things up. So, uh, okay, that should be it. Uh, Will says, Jerome, you should make a Telegram or Discord like you mentioned. Yeah, actually, that's something I should do. Um, I wonder if I could do a Telegram. I, I just don't know if Telegram is going to be as um, easy as like, because Discord, you could at least separate stuff. I'll, I'll look into it. But yeah, if you guys are interested, I might do a, a Telegram or Discord um, just for my channel, just to, there's like a small plug. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> we'll take a shot when he says phone Jerome. Uh, 
<laughs> we'll smash that like button uh turkey shots <laughs> all right guys that's it for now um guys thank you so much for for joining and tuning in um maybe tomorrow if you do I will try to start posting. If I do live stream, I'm going to start trying to put the post up an hour before I do it so that people at least have some semblance of a heads up uh, on Twitter. I don't think I'm going to like keep spamming it on everything else I have because I it just, it's too much. But, uh, but again, thank you guys for stopping by. Appreciate it. Um, I'm hitting the end broadcast button now. We're going to have about three seconds of weird silence and, uh,